guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is Christian and welcome to my crazy plant life. In today's video, I want to share five favorite houseplants that's making me rediscover my love and passion for common and basic or classic houseplants that we often forget, especially when you've been in the plant game for a while. I'm guilty of it, you know, recently I've been really focusing more on these, you know, rare or collector type of houseplants like my Philodendron Gloriosum or the Soderoi or my Ethereum Queen, my Forgettii or my Regali. Or lately I've been really into a lot of these unidentified synapses like the Silver Hero, the Silver Knight or the Silver Platinum. Comment below and let me know if you've also been guilty of only being into a lot of these rare or collector type of houseplants. So when I began to search for plants, I came across these five plants that a few of them I've had in the past but I completely forgot about and some of them I've never owned in the past and I have no idea how I got this long not owning one of them because honestly when I came across them they were giving me a lot of these like wholesome vibes or that feeling and joy that I was once getting when I first started my houseplant journey where you would get so excited when you would see like a heart leaf philodendron that was just green and trailing really nicely and Although I do get that same feeling when I get into more of my rare or collect type of plants, there was also a portion of it that was coming from just getting it because I needed it or I wanted it. And it was more of that place versus, you know, the joy that it brings you. So I was really happy to come across these plants because, man, uh, I love the feeling it was giving me. So I'm going to introduce these five plants to you and I'm going to share the general care guide for them. And you are going to hear a lot of tadas because this is going to be a classic crazy plant guide video. So without further ado, let's get started with the first plant. It is the, tada, the Aglonema Cutlass. So first of all, this is my first Aglonema. And I don't know how I gone this long without ever owning one. They are so beautiful and I love this variety. I also came across the Silver Bay, which is also beautiful, as well as the Maria. But this one out of the three is my favorite. I love the strap like leaves because it gives that nice height and the variegation pattern on it, that nice dark green, you know, throughout its leaf, as well as around the edge of the leaf against that more lighter green. And it is so beautiful. I still can't believe I gone all these years without ever owning one. And man, they they are gorgeous and the best thing about aglonemas is they're really easy to care for so this is a great house plant for beginners it can tolerate most lighting it does prefer a little bit more of the low to medium or diffuse light so if you do have like a large south facing window or maybe a west facing window you want to make sure you take this back a bit because having it too close to the window will scorch the leaves and you also want to make sure that when you are watering your aglonemas that you do allow the soil to dry out completely before watering it because they are prone to root rot other than that, very easy, very cool to have in your home. I really just love the strap like leaves on it. It gives me kind of the um, Anthurium viterifolium vibe, but more upright. So it does grow upright versus like, you know, trailing down. So really, really love this plant. So the next plant I want to introduce you guys to, it is the, ta-da, the Diefenbachia Memoria Corsii. And this is a beautiful Diefenbachia. So I did have a Diefenbachia in the past. It was one of my first house plants. It was the Camille, which is a beautiful Diefenbachia because it has that nice kind of like white, uh, you know, beautiful leaf. And then around the edges has that dark green on it. But this Diefenbachia gives me that classic vibe, but a little bit more unique. So you guys can see that nice, you know, variegated patterns with the green on green. But what's cool about this is that white speckled variegation, you know, splattered across its leaves. So very, very cool, very unique. I've never seen anything like it. The cool thing about Diefenbachia is they can grow pretty large and they are also easy to care for. The one thing I learned with Diefenbachia is they need consistency. So when it comes to your watering, you want to make sure that you don't allow the soil to dry out completely. I'll usually water this one maybe when the soil is about 80% dry, but I got to make sure that I stay on that type of watering because if I allow it to dry out completely, and then I give it a good drink. And then next time I go to like 80% and then I give it a good drink. I do find that the leaves tend to yellow pretty fast and it just acts up on me. So that's one thing I definitely learned when it came to my Diefenbachia. Now, when it comes to the lighting, you want to give it a lot of that bright indirect light. Unlike the Aglonemas, I would definitely have this a little closer to the window. You know, I do have a south facing window at home and I do have a west facing window here at the shop. And uh, they can tolerate a little bit more of that bright indirect light versus the Aglonema. But man, this is so beautiful. Only thing with Diefenbachia is you do got to be careful with them. You know, they are quite toxic. So if you have pets or children, you want to just be careful when having this plant in your home. But this one is beautiful. And I love Diefenbachias. They can grow pretty wild and pretty tall. 
doll as well. I remember growing up, uh, my grandpa had one. He had one of those like classic green one. I forget what it's called, but it was pretty tall. And this is what this plant was giving me. It just gave me that wholesome childhood vibe. So I really love it. And uh, comment below and let me know if you guys have a Daikinbakia and what kind do you have in your collection. But this one is a beauty. So the next plant I want to introduce you guys to is one that I think has been forgotten, but it is such a classic house plant. And this one, uh, this one was cool because I really love the color in this one. It is the, ta-da, a snake plant. And this one is called the black coral. And you guys can see why I love the dark leaves on the snake plant. And one thing that's cool about this one is just the way it's structured and how compact it is. So I think this particular plant is great for those of you guys who are not looking into like filling your home with a whole bunch of plants and you want something a little bit more minimalist and something that's a little bit more maybe architecturally design friendly. And I think this one is one of those plants. I just love how full and compact the leaves are. And again, this nice dark green on green color is stunning. And I never really noticed it until a friend of mine came to the shop and you know, it was his first plant. So he got it because he was a little bit more design conscious of of everything in his place so he got this he put it in a nice black pot and it just looks so cool and yeah I, I love it so this is one of those plants I think has been forgotten and uh, I don't know why because th they're stunning I mean I have forgotten about snake plants you know the one that I tend to think about the most is my moonshine or the whale fin because those are a little bit more unique or different and these ones you know sometimes you'll often see quite a bit at like restaurants or the malls but I don't actually see black corals uh, quite often I see kind of the classic you know, yellow and green uh, type of snake plants. I think that one's a Zelanica, I think it's what it's called. And the best thing about snake plants is they are very low maintenance. You typically do not need to water your snake plant often. I probably would water mine every three weeks, to be honest. And you know, they can tolerate the low, medium or bright light. So they're very versatile. And again, perfect for a lot of you guys who may be just starting out your plant journey or for those of you guys who's looking for something a little bit more low maintenance as well as minimalist. So definitely get yourself a black core snake plant. So the next plant I want to introduce you guys to is one of my favorite genus ever and I can't believe I don't have this variety because I feel like I have every variety possible. It is the ta-da! A Ficus Elastica Sophia. So this one is cool. You guys know I love Ficus Elastica plants. I think they are super easy and they thrive really really well in like bright you know indirect light and even a few hours of direct sunlight I typically have all my ficus in a south facing window and they are thriving you guys have seen my ficus sineki that I've grown from almost this size to pretty much like four and a half feet tall now my ficus burgundy my ficus ruby but this is a sophia and at first I thought it was a burgundy because it does have that green color but the more I look at it, the more I realize that it doesn't actually have that dark, deep green color. It almost looks black, but I do find they kind of share that burgundy mid-rib that you guys see here. And the difference also I notice is the way the leaf shape of the Sophia versus the burgundy. The Sophia has a little bit more rounded type of leaf shape versus the burgundy, which is a little bit more elongated or narrower, if that makes sense. And I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison here, and you guys can see the difference between the burgundy and the Sophia. So when I came across this, I was like, man, you are a beauty. And I can't wait to shop at my own shop and take this one home and grow it from, you know, this uh, six inch pot to maybe, you know, in a few years, we can get this guy to maybe like four feet tall, similar to my Tineki. Or maybe we should like, you know, turn it into more of a tree form and get it more bushy, like the burgundy I have at home, but very, very beautiful. You know, ficus elastica for me are really easy. I've done a lot of videos on how to care for them. So if you guys are looking for care tips for your ficus elastica, definitely check it out here at the cards. But I typically have mine, like I said, in a bright, you know, indirect or a few hours of direct sunlight, south facing preferred. If you only have maybe like a west or north facing window, just try and move it as close to the window as possible. The key thing with Fike Celestica for me is allowing the soil to dry out completely between waterings because I do find that if you do water it quite often, you know, the leaves will tend to get a lot of brown spot, especially the variegated kinds. But I do find with the burgundy, they can tolerate a little bit more of the overwatering versus your variegated kind like your Tineki or your Ruby. But yeah, I was so happy when I found this Sophia. It gave me that joy when I first found my Tineki and my Burgundy, I think at Home Depot. So I was like jumping up and down when I saw this one. Uh, the last plant I want to share with you guys is another one that I also had in my collection in the past, but I love this plant because similar to the black coral snake plant, it does kind of give that very minimalist look, but also has just a cool vibe to it. It is the, ta-da, the ponytail palm. So look at this beauty and I love ponytail palms. First of all, 
I like plants that has this nice kind of codex or trunk base that you guys see here. It almost looks like a mini bonsai tree. And the fact that a ponytail palm can look good, small or like a large one, and it can honestly fit in any space. That's what I love about this, this particular plant because it just looks so cool. I think it's quite design friendly and kind of gives that minimalist look, but also giving you that jungle vibe feel with its like crazy uh, foliage that you guys see here. The one thing when it comes to ponytail palm, most people assume that it's a palm type of plant when it technically is a succulent. So you do got to be careful when it comes to watering this particular plant. They store a lot of their water in their trunk or in the base here. So they often do not need to be watered. I'll probably water mine maybe like once every three weeks or maybe once every four weeks in the summer. And similar to the snake plant, they can tolerate all types of lighting. However, if you do plan on placing this plant, say in a low lit room, you want to make sure you start it off by giving it bright and direct light and then slowly gradually kind of you know acclimating it to that more of the low light you will find that the leaves will turn darker in more of a low light setting versus in a bright light setting where the leaves tend to be a little bit more of this green color but very very cool plant and i love this plant like i remember seeing one of this in mexico uh, at the airbnb i stayed at and they only had one plant and they had this one but it was a massive one in their space and it looks so cool they take a very very long time for that to get to that size so you don't even need to repot this plant often and uh, yeah i think it looks cool so definitely happy to have a ponytail palm again in my collection and yeah i'm loving this one so those are the five basic and common house plants just making me fall in love with them again and i remember the other day when i had a customer come in here and she was looking at the aglaonema cutlass and she was sharing that she loves aglaonema and that's all she had in her home and you can just sense the joy she had with those plants and i felt that joy again because i can relate to falling in love with that cutlass and same thing with this ponytail palm so if more than anything what i learned these last few days especially as i was working in the shop and kind of just storing as much plants as i can and talking to different types of customers is joy and beauty for all plants and it's making me fall in love with every single one of them again and i've always loved plants and like i said earlier you know this past year i've kind of just been focused on a little bit more of the you know rare collector type of plants maybe for the right or wrong reasons but having these plants here in the shop now and interacting with a lot of different types of people in their plant journey like the other day as well too i had someone who was getting their first plant and they got a ficus lastica and i was sharing the joy and excitement uh that they were going through when they were getting their first plant so really really cool and i'm so happy to have these plants both at home as well as here at the shop comment below and let me know which five common and classic house plants that you guys are feeling right now or that you think is a little bit underrated or have recently been forgotten by the plant community other than that hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys in the next one peace